Have you opened OBS Studio but can't figure out where the heck to add alerts? Don't worry, I got you. Let me show you how to set up alerts inside OBS Studio right now. So if we go inside OBS Studio, naturally you'd go to the sources box, click add a new source, and you'd want to add alerts, but there's no freaking alerts here. So it'll just make you so angry, you just have to go and grab your shake weight and viciously shake weight. Now there's a couple ways to do this, but in today's video, I'll be showing you how to use stream elements to set up your alerts. But if you guys are wondering where I got this really cool overlay from, or you need some alerts, this is my favorite place to get it, which is owned, and I'll leave it linked in the description down below. And they were nice enough to sponsor today's video. But I usually like to scroll down to where it shows the stream design bestseller packages. As you can see, we were using the Synth Runner series, but the Dark Mode series is honestly one of my favorites because I think it looks super sleek. And if you go to the left-hand side, you can actually see an animated preview, which comes with alerts, the banner, you got all the starting soon screens, you got webcam overlays, panels for underneath your stream. It comes with literally everything you're ever gonna need for when you go to stream. So if you want to make your stream look more professional or you just want to go and buy some alerts, then you can save 50% off using coupon code CPAWS and I'll leave a link for you in the description down below. So in order to start setting up our alerts, we're going to go to streamelements.com, which I'll leave linked in the description down below. But once you're on the stream element site, we're going to go to the top right corner where it says get started. Then if you want to have your alerts for YouTube or Twitch, then you'll be able to switch between the options here. But for today's video, I'm going to do Twitch alerts. So we're going to connect with Twitch. But if you want to use YouTube, it's the same exact process. So I'm going to connect with Twitch. Then you'll be brought to the dashboard, but we're not interested in any of this crap. We actually want to go to the left-hand side where it says streaming tools and then click on overlays. Now you can see I have so many different things here, but please ignore it. I've just been streaming for over six years now, so I got a bunch of crap on my screen. But don't worry about any of that because we're just going to click new overlay in the top right corner. So click that. And then it's going to ask you what overlay resolution we want to use. Majority of you guys will want to use a 1080p resolution resolution because I'm playing on a 1080p monitor and I'll be streaming at 1080p in OBS. So 1080p is likely going to be the choice for most of you. However, if you notice when we're moving the alert box around, it's not matching up perfectly to your OBS screen, then you might have to change your resolution here. So keep that in mind. But majority of you are going to use 1080p. So we're going to hit 1080 and hit start. Then from here, you'll notice that we have the title in the top left. So I'm just simply going to call this alert. So we know what the heck it's going to be later. Then we can start by adding a widget on the left hand side. So we'll click add widget and then we'll go to the alert section and click on alert box. But you can see stream elements has so much stuff on here that it'll literally just take you days just to go through it all. But we'll start with the alert box. So click alert box and you can see two things just happened. We have this nice box right here on our screen and then we have a bunch of different alerts on the left hand side. So by default, they give you a bunch of different default alerts. So for example, they have a follow alert that plays. So if we click a little gear icon next to any of the alerts, we'll be able to customize that alert. You can see it has this little default image and it'll have a default sound and basically a default alert that's already set up for you. So just to test some stuff out, I'm gonna hit the X button and then we're gonna make sure that all of these are on or whatever ones that you wanna have on for your stream are enabled. Then anytime you make any changes in stream elements, we're gonna click the save button in the top right corner so that way it'll save the changes. And then we can go to the bottom of the screen where it says emulate. We're going to click that. And then we're going to make sure that we click on follower event because we want to test our follower alert and they already have default things in there. So that way you can just have something if you want to ready rock and roll right away. So we can click on follower event. And it's going to play the default follower alert. We have that little ding that plays and then this cool animation. So if we want to customize any of these alerts, we just go to whatever alert that we want to change. We'll click the little gear icon next to it. So I'll click the follower alert gear icon and we're greeted with all of these different options. So if you want to change what the alert looks like, we can change the image or video. So if you guys bought an overlay package from owned or even alerts from owned, you'll be able to set that stuff here. So if you want, we can click on set image, which will also bring it to change video as well. And then we can click on the upload button in the top right. So we'll click that. The supported formats are listed here in case you're trying to upload some weird file and it's not registering. But I'm just gonna click anywhere on this screen. It's gonna bring up the file explorer. So this is the dark mode series package that we got from owned earlier. So we double click on that. We'll go to files and everything is nicely categorized. So in this instance, we wanna use an animated alert. So I'll double click on animated alert. 
You can see we got a bunch of different options like dark mode alert follower because this is a follower alert. So I'm just going to double click on it and then it's going to add it to our little database of alerts inside stream elements. So now we can see it under the videos tab because it is a video, which means that we are not able to submit it because we have to go to change video. So what we're going to do is X out of this go to change video since it is animated. If it's just an image and it's static, you'll do set image instead, but it is a video. So we're gonna click change video. And then now when we hover over it, we're able to submit it. So we're gonna click on submit and it's going to put in that alert. However, with this animated alert, if we wanted to add the sound that came with it, we can click on upload sound. And then we're gonna click again to bring up our file explorer. Then I'll be able to go to the alert sounds folder and then we can click on dark mode follow. However, I personally think that these alerts are pretty obnoxious because they're 10 seconds long. And for this video, I'm just not gonna use it. I'm gonna go with the default sound that they have in stream elements. So sorry, not sorry. So now if we click save in the top right corner, which you guys need to get accustomed to, please save as much as possible. Otherwise they're not gonna save your changes. Then we'll go to emulate and see what it looks like so far. So if we emulate the follow event it's gonna play our new thing but we don't want it to look like this right so that's where we have the layout so we click the middle layout we don't want that one either we want the one all the way on the left where it says text over image so now if we emulate it again you'll see that we have the alert pop up but there's no text where the heck did the text go and that's kind of weird I honestly don't know why this happens but I do know how to fix it if we go all the way down and we skip ahead to the text settings at the bottom and actually bring up the text settings here then we can go to the advanced tab and then you see how it says minus 50. We're going to change that to zero. And now you can see the text is coming up right there just a little bit. It's hard to see in the background, but I've done this before. So I'm actually going to change the top to 100 and that should give us almost a perfect alignment for the owned alert. So we'll change that to here. You can see it in the background here. And if we hit save because you want to save it, then emulate, then follower event. Now the text should line up perfectly inside the owned alert, which looks great. And obviously you can go and like fine tune it to make it even fit more if you got different alerts, but you'll do that under the text settings, advanced settings, and then change like the margins to change the alignment of the text. But since we're under the text, you can change the font. You can change uh, how large this font is. You can change the bold. You can do pretty much everything shadows. You can do the highlight. You can change the highlighted color. So if you want it to be I don't know, let's say this color, because that's that's a really pretty color. I like that color. Then we'll click save and then we'll run it again to see what the highlight looks like. Now you can see it's highlighted that color. I think that looks pretty good. So that's all the text settings there. So I'm going to actually get out of this by clicking text settings and then the little down arrow. And then we're going to go back up to over here where we have all of the primary alert settings. So you can change the alert message. So so-and-so is now following. Or if you want to do like a really cringy message, like has now joined the freaking, I don't know. I'm not creative enough to think of one on the spot, but you get the point. You can also change the alert duration. So if you don't want it to last the full 10 seconds, such as myself, then we can click on five and then hit save. And now the alert will only last five seconds, which is a lot more relatable. But we can move on to the variation settings, which if you want to have a different follower alert play every time you get a new follower so that way you don't have the same follow alert going off you're able to do that with variations so you can click on add new variation and then you can click variation name and you'll be able to copy the original follower alert so that way you just have something to work off of and that way you can go and set a new image or change your video and basically create a second follower alert that will randomly get picked from when someone follows. So you can change the percentage of that happening with this by changing it from 100 to, let's say, like 50. And that way, if you get a follower once, 50% chance you get this alert or the other alert. That way you can kind of keep it a little bit more exciting. But honestly, I think it's a little overkill for a lot of people. So don't worry about it too much. So I'm actually going to cancel out of this. And then we're going to click this little blue arrow next to variation settings and move on to the text to speech settings, which is a lot more entertaining. So we can click on enable text to speech and also change how loud the speaker is going to sound. Then you can change the text to speech voice. Everyone's favorite seems to be Brian, but they have so many different voices to choose from in different languages, I'm pretty sure. So if you want, you can choose any of these delicious, delicious names, but I'm gonna stick with Brian. And basically text to speech will just announce whatever message is being said. 
So for example, if we save and emulate another follower event, it's gonna read out so-and-so has followed. So I'm gonna run that bad boy right here. We're gonna take a listen. Melina is now following. So if you wanna use text-to-speech, you're more than welcome to, but we're gonna move on to the next step, which is the text settings, which we already kind of went over. It's just customizing how the text looks. You guys are smart enough to figure it out too. So we'll actually go on to the next section, which is the animation settings. So if you wanna have an enter and exit animation for both your alert, or your text or both, you're able to do so. So if you want it to, let's say, bounce in and then bounce out, we can change the duration to one seconds or longer. So that way, if we hit save and run it, it will bounce in. So the alert will bounce in right there. See how it kind of like wiggled in or bounced in or whatever. And then if we wait for the alert to finish, it's gonna bounce out, which I Brittany think looks pretty cool. Followed. And I just got cut off by Brian, you son of a- so You can feel free to mess with the animation settings here, but now it is time to integrate it into OBS Studio so we can get it working for your stream. So after we've saved all of our settings, let's open up OBS Studio. But I've opened up both of these windows for you guys so you can get a better idea of what's going on. And if you ever get lost, all you have to do is click on layers and then alert box and it'll bring you to your settings right here and you'll be able to customize everything again. So the first thing we're going to do is click on this little chain or paper clip or whatever you want to call it and it's going to copy the overlay URL which will be confirmed by saying it down there. And so then we're going to go to the sources box in OBS Studio. We're going to click that little plus button and then we're going to click on browser source. We'll call this one alerts. You can do SE for stream elements if you want. Then hit OK. And then we're going to replace this URL with the new URL we just copied and then change the width to whatever resolution we're using. In this case, we picked 1080 earlier at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to put 1920 for the width and then 1080 for the height. And then we're going to hit OK. That way, it's going to have the same box as we have in stream elements. So see how they're both that rectangle? We got the rectangle here then we got the rectangle in OBS. Wherever I move this alert box, we'll move it exactly in OBS Studio. So if I want it in the top left corner, I'll move it to the top left corner in Stream Elements. I'll remember to hit save, otherwise it won't show it in here. Then we can emulate another follower event, but make sure preview live on stream is selected. So we're gonna click follower event. It's gonna pop up in here and it's gonna pop up on our screen in OBS Studio. However, if you wanted to move it to the bottom right corner, it will just change it in Stream Elements. Remember to hit Save, then we can emulate another follower event, and it will place your alert in the bottom right corner of OBS. Now, when it comes to the audio, this might be different for a couple people, so pay attention. So if we play the follower event, it's gonna play the audio through Stream Elements and OBS, and so that's why we're getting a little kind of echo that you'll be able to hear. Give it a sec. Now following. Yeah, you can kind of hear they were stacked. If we close this, then that'll stop that one. However, since we're using desktop audio, we're able to hear our alert audio through our stream. Now, if you're not using desktop audio, what you'll do is you're gonna double click on the Streamlabs alerts source that we did earlier. Then we're gonna do control audio via OBS, click okay, and then you'll be able to see your alert volume when the alert happens. So this is only if you're not using desktop audio, because if you're using desktop audio, then you'll just get another echo. So if you're not using desktop audio, go to your alerts, and then you can go to advanced audio properties, and then you can go to the alert section right here, so alerts, and then if you want your chat to hear it and yourself, you'll do monitor and output. That way you'll monitor the audio of the alert as well as outputting it to your viewers. Now keep in mind, if you have desktop audio, you probably don't have to do this, but in the rare case that you do need to do this, this is your option. Since I am using desktop audio, I'm just going to disable that and we don't have to worry about it. So when you're done customizing all of your alerts, you actually don't need to keep your stream elements web page up. You just save your changes and then close it. And then anytime you get alerts, they will feed through OBS. So you actually don't need to have this open whatsoever anymore. And we didn't talk about the other alerts, but if you want, you can go and customize it the same way we did as the followers. But they also just have the default ones. So if you want to have like one for cheer a thousand bits or more, then this default one will play, which I think is fine. And if you hear like a little bit of an echo, which we hear now, it's because it's playing audio through the Stream Elements webpage and OBS Studio. As soon as we close Stream Elements and we get alerts popping up, it won't echo because it's not gonna play it twice. Cause right now it's playing once through Stream Elements 
and then another time through OBS. And since I have them both up at the same time, that's why you're hearing that little kind of echo effect. Also make sure that when you're adding your alerts, they will always be the top source. So for example, if I have my alerts below my banner, they're obviously gonna be hidden behind my banner so you're never gonna see them. So whenever you're adding alerts, just make sure they are the top source Otherwise, they'll be hidden behind whatever's in front of it. But if you want to take your stream to the next level, then watch this video to the side of me. My name's Cody, and I'll see you in the next one.